This is the Northampton Conservation Commission meeting for the 20, uh, let's see, what day are we here? The 23rd of September. Um, day after fall. The first full day of fall. Uh, the commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the eight interests identified in the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and our duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meeting dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance and we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit their comments to issues that are within our purview. Uh, today's agenda includes uh, a public hearing for a notice of intent for a headwall replacement within land underwater. This, uh, uh, on Sylvester Road and new guardrail placement on Sylvester, Chestfield and Kennedy Roads and also on Arch Street. Uh, and then a, uh, another public hearing notice of intent for greenhouse building, parking, bike path, stormwater management and related site improvements. Uh, this at uh, the 60 Damon Road by the uh, uh, boathouse. Um, and then there is a notice of intent that's gonna be continued uh, for uh, construction of single family homes and a shared driveway on Cardinal Way. Um, we did have uh, minutes that Sarah sent around for uh, back in May uh, at the uh, oh, and first an announcement, which we already heard by audio that the uh, meeting is being recorded. Um, and oh, I guess I should first ask. Um, is there any public comment not having to do with a specific case before us tonight? If not, um, does someone want to make a motion to approve the minutes that Sarah distributed for May, was it 15th, Sarah? Really, really, I don't think. May 13th, and I move that we uh, approve the minutes. Yes. Oh, May 13th. Okay, very good. And a second? Second. Any amendments or modifications? If not, all in favor? And Sarah, I gather you need a roll call. Correct. Uh, Kevin? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jason? Yes. And Randy? Yes. All right, thank you. All right, um, so first case before us today, notice of intent for headwall replacement within land underwater and bordering vegetated wetland, uh, Sylvester Road and a new guardrail on Sylvester Road, Chesterfield and Kennedy Roads and Arch Street. Um, as I say, I can't see the whole gallery view, so I don't know who's here to present, but I assume someone's here representing um, uh, the city in uh, proposing this work. Yeah, I'm Johanna Stacy. I'm the Senior Environmental Planner with Northampton DPW. Um, I'll be presenting, I'm joined by Chris Baker, who's an um, engineer also with DPW. <clears throat> um, so if it's okay, I can share my screen and I've got a short presentation here. Yeah, let me just... Right, you should be able to. Is it possible to share? Yep, try now. Okay. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so the DPW is proposing to replace um, or actually install guardrail at seven locations um, within the right of way of roads where there are generally fairly steep embankments close to the roadway. Um, and we're also proposing to replace two significantly deteriorating headwalls that are located at a culvert crossing on Sylvester Road. Um, most of this work is not covered under our general order of conditions. So we're submitting a notice of intent for this work. There we go. <clears throat> um, I'm going to go through the guardrail work first and then discuss the, head, the culvert headwalls second. Um, 
Guardrails proposed at seven locations, two, lo two are on Kennedy Road, three are on Sylvester Road, one is on Chesterfield Road, and one is on Arch Street. On Arch Street, DPW proposes to install 975 linear feet of guardrail along the southern edge where there's a steep embankment down to the Mill River. Um, part of this work area is located in priority and estimated habitat for endangered species. Uh, DPW already submitted a MESA checklist review and has received a no take letter as of September 8th, 2021. Um, <clears throat> This work area is also located within riverfront area from the Mill River and buffer areas to Inland Bank and BVW. Uh, the second area is Chesterfield Road, where we propose 675 linear feet of guardrail. Um, you can see sort of this embankment along the edge of Chesterfield Road. And there's a small intermittent stream that runs underneath the road and discharges. So a portion of the work is within buffer to intermittent stream per the Northampton um, wetlands ordinance. <clears throat> the third area is uh, an area near 311 Kennedy Road within the right of way. Um, this is sort of an older Google streets image um, from when the road was being repaved a few years ago. Um, but the guardrail is proposed, 125 linear feet of guardrail is proposed on this side of the roadway. Um, there's an intermittent stream that runs beneath the road um, and some bordering vegetated wetland that is sort of off the, off the screen here to the right. <clears throat> so the work is proposed within the buffer area for intermittent stream and also within BVW buffer and Inland Bank buffer. The next area is an area near 523 Kennedy Road, um, where you can see a fairly steep embankment right next to the road and the, the guardrails there is, has seen better days. Um, we're proposing 140 linear feet of guardrail along one side of the road. Um, again, there's an intermittent stream that runs beneath the road, and so the guardrail work will be within buffer areas to intermittent stream and inland bank. Uh, next, there's an area on 51 Sylvester Road um, where a perennial stream runs beneath the road. Um, we're proposing 130 linear feet of guardrail on both sides of the road. Um, <clears throat> so the, the guardrail itself is in upland areas, but it is within riverfront area and buffer area to BBW, um, located both upstream and downstream of the culvert crossing and within buffer area to inland bank. Uh, 336 Sylvester Road. Um, many people might be familiar with this site where the, the guardrail above a culvert has been failing. So we're replacing um, the guardrail on both sides of the stream, or the river, um, 110 feet on each side. <clears throat> this is a perennial stream in this location, and it also has 100-year floodplain. Um, so there is bordering land subject to flooding mapped within the area. It doesn't have a base flood elevation. Um, and the, the top of the bank here where the road is, is probably three or four feet above the elevation of the river. Most likely we're above the base flood elevation. Um, but work is also occurring within riverfront area and <clears throat> buffer to inland bank. Um, let me go back. I should also mention in each of these guardrail locations that in addition to guardrail, we're also installing um, a narrow line of milling mulch beneath the guardrail along the edge of the pavement, um, which serves to both decrease erosion from water running over the pavement and off, um, and also sort of supports the edge of the pavement prevents that from deteriorating. What is mill mulch exactly? 
milling mulch is, Chris might be able to answer this specifically, but yeah. it's sort of crushed asphalt. Yeah, it's basically when you mill the, the top of the road off, it's actually that. Okay. So it's, yeah, also known as just road millings. Or scarified waste or something. It's, it's and is that, a standard. Is that just uh, put down or tamped down in some way? Yeah, it would be, yeah, it would be, um, they probably use, I'm not actually sure how they compact it, but it would be compacted. It wouldn't be loose. And it's also to, um, to prevent vegetation from growing up because it does become a nuisance um, to deal with the vegetation in between the guardrail posts. So that's the, the standard uh, DOT detail has milling mulch under guardrails. Okay. What's going to keep the posts up? I mean, some of the uh, areas look a very narrow shoulder or goes over the steep bank. And also, as some of the areas look like stone, the, the top of the culvert is maybe and a half below the surface of the road. And there's not much to punch a support in for a guardrail without. Yep. So, the yeah, there's the option to do um, deep posts. Um, in some of the areas um, that we're worried about. And there are, over the, some of the culverts, there's actually 25 foot spans. So that we're, we're a little bit away from the edge of the culvert. This one that's shown 336, this is actually a pretty wide culvert. Um, some yeah. of the other ones have more clearance, but so it's a 25 foot span over there, over those areas. But you're right, there's, in some areas, there's not a lot of slope to go into and in those cases we can make the field call we may use deeper posts in those areas and and how would if uh, there might be like a six or eight foot uh, footing um the, yep. how would that be uh, is that uh, through some kind of auger or what what's the um no they use piled they use pile drivers so mm -hmm. it would just be a direct push okay thank you And the last site uh, for guardrail is located on near 592 Sylvester Road. Um, there's, there's a portion of the roadway. We're only proposing 158 linear feet on one side of the roadway. There's a portion of the roadway where there's a near vertical drop almost adjacent to the edge of the roadway. Um, right now there are sandbags there to, to sort of shore up the edge of the road and <clears throat> um, but that's not a that's not a good situation. Um, so at this location, there's a photo of the outlet head wall on the left here. This was taken two years ago, so the it's fairly dry. The photo on the right is the inlet head wall, which was taken this summer. Um, so we're proposing, in addition to the guardrail, we're proposing to replace both head walls. Um, and for the inlet head wall, um, because there's such, there's almost no shoulder here and the head wall itself has a five foot base. Um, and so really shouldn't be excavating beneath the roadway to install the base. So that requires sort of bumping out this head wall a bit um, and installing it <clears throat> in this area. Um, so that'll be a couple feet out from where it is currently. Um, most of the significant wetland impacts of this project are involved with this culvert replacement, particularly the inlet replacement. Um, we're proposing to have the heavy equipment operate and excavate from the roadway, so they'd be so they wouldn't actually be entering or leaving the roadway, but the arm would be reaching down into the wetland to excavate for the base. I'm going to add a little bit of culvert to it too to bring it out to the edge of the head wall. A, a really small amount. Yeah. 
It's really yeah, we need, we need three feet. We need to extend it three feet. I believe that includes the one foot width of the wall itself. Well, it it currently go it currently is 18 inches off of the edge of the pavement. So the existing headwall is 18 inches. The oh, one that we're proposing is only 12 inches and it has a five foot base, but only three feet um, of the footing is, is on the road side. So basically the edge of the footing will line up exactly with the edge of the roadway. These precasts so, are, are poured in place. Precast. 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 Um, ideally, the they would be installed during a time of low flow or no flow, ideally. Um, Good luck with that this year. I'm sorry. Good luck with that this year. I yeah, this is this is probably gonna happen next year. Next year. So we We'll hope for some drier weather. Yeah. Um, in the event that our precipitation patterns continue, um, we're proposing to install a coffer dam upstream of the inlet and set up a bypass pump system to go over the road and outlet on upland areas through a stone filter before it goes back into the stream or into the wetland. Those just sandbags, or are they uh, the next uh, well, big plastic things that you blow up uh, or fill with water or whatever? Yeah, for something of this size, they'd probably just be sandbags. Yeah, but yeah, we we allow the contractor to choose the methodology within a certain footprint. <clears throat> As per the plans, erosion controls will be set up around all of the waterways where there's a waterway or intermittent stream near a guardrail installation. So I want to make sure I mention that as well. <clears throat> the guardrails, are they um, send out for bids for the companies to do that or do you guys do it in-house yeah this this project will be bid this is like definitely too large for the in-house crews to handle so we're probably going to get that guy from the east because all the state guardrails i can't think of his name but um, yeah, there's, it would be, so there, there's a list of um, pre-qualified mass DOT contractors and we require that they be on that mass DOT list in order to bid. So yeah, there, there's a handful of companies um, that typically bid on this type of work. This would be a smaller job for them. So um, the last time we went out to bid, we only got two bids back. Well, the the, uh, the guardrails will be probably the quickest of the uh, the work that's going to be done. Um, yeah, online. and likely those companies like there's a like Premier Fence. A lot of them, I don't think they have the equipment to do the headwall replacement, so they'd likely sub that part of it out. Well, so the same company that installs the guardrails going to do the uh, headwalls too. It's it's being bid as one project. But we're anticipating that 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 the headwall work would get subbed out, and the guardrail company would be the prime contractor, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, other than the obvious improvements to uh, uh, structure, um, what what do you see as the improvements to the jurisdictional areas that uh, um, that, that we have to rule on to allow this work? Hannah, do you want to talk about that at all? I think, I think in this area, in the area that we're viewing now, 592 mm -hmm. Sylvester Road, it's right now it's, there's visible erosion from the bank that's presumably falling into the, either the waterway or the wetland below it. 
Um, so by shoring up that bank, um, we're preventing further erosion into the or sedimentation into the wetland area. Um, in, in terms of other areas, it's 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 largely a road maintenance right. project. There was in the. Chris, do you have anything to add? I don't. Yeah, we didn't have anything specifically about um, stream improvements. It is true that adding. I mean, although we're having to move the road out and we will have fill within the land underwater, um, it will provide a, a larger, but like a three foot buffer with some filtration off of the road, which will likely improve water quality. Cause right now there's the head wall is sitting adjacent to the pavement. So it's just the pavement and then it's 18 inches. Mm -hmm. And there is, it is kind of a, an area where water is running off of the road there because there's no formal drainage system. So from that perspective, it may have some, you know, minor Im improvement in water quality. But other than that, we don't have any, any ecological improvements or anything like that. So it wouldn't be worthwhile to put curbing on the side of the road to, re to make sure the water doesn't go over the edge. There's no catch basins nearby. There's no catch basins. It's country drainage. The milling is going to go all the way down the slope to the uh, head wall? Um, so the millings will only be th uh, three feet wide around the guardrail posts. So if there's if there's a, a break in slope before that three feet, we wouldn't, we'd probably make a field determination to make the strip narrower. Because yeah, we don't want the millings falling down the back slope. Yeah. Are the trees that are proposed to be removed the ones visible in the center photograph? That um, that actually has been a last minute change, which we forgot to mention. Um, we're not going to take those trees out. So those, I think there were there were four there there are five live trees and one dead tree that we we're proposing to remove, and we're going to leave those in place. Um, I think they can work around it. The um, the ones on the inlet side are 15 feet away from the center line of the culvert. And I went out there and looked and I think it'll be tight, but I think we can do some minor um, root pruning and get around those. And the two on the downstream side are at the base of the slope. So I think they can successfully work around them. Well, our root systems are probably holding what slope there is there in place anyways. They could be. Yeah, if we find that, I think the ones the ones on the upstream side are far enough away that they're probably not in enmeshed with the, the existing head wall. The ones on the downstream side, they they're a little closer, but I think they're low enough that I'm I'm hoping there aren't too many roots, you know, wrapped around the head wall or you know, holding up that slope. I mean, once we get so the head walls are going to be 10 and a half feet long. So they're, they're slightly longer than the existing head walls. So there should be more slow protection than there is currently. Mm -hmm. So I guess I have a, a, a question for Sarah. I'm remembering the DEP comments about uh, that work uh, it, that's non-exempt in jurisdictional areas that will require some kind of improvement. And uh, uh, I can see how um, reduction of erosion um, is is an obvious improvement. Is is that enough? I mean, technically, how do we measure the degree of improvement that's required in order for us to say uh, that this is permittable? And there, there's no quantitative guidance in the CMR to be able to do that. So it's really up, up to the commission's discretion. Okay. I mean, it, it seems like the biggest impacts of the project overall are probably the placement of the, the millings and the crushed stone underneath the guardrail in the riverfront. Oh, plus the extension of the pipe and head walls and stuff in. Is this one going to require like wing walls to the head walls because it's so steep or? 
Mm -hmm. nope, a... we're not going to do head wall. No, yeah, it doesn't have wing walls. It's okay. a, it's a typical, it's a, it's the typical mass DOT straight head wall. It's only 10 and a half feet long. Um, and yeah, it was already, it's been pre-designed um, by Aero Concrete. So it will support the, the slope that it's retaining behind it. And that's why the footing is five feet. Mm -hmm. How high is it going to, does it extend above the uh, top of the culvert? Four feet. Okay, so it's it, almost it, it like a retention. Out, yeah, it sticks out approximately six inches above the road. That's kind of what we were aiming for. I was going to say, yeah, for erosion control, that will be a blessing in this particular area. Yeah, yeah, we definitely, we don't want the water to travel. The water currently is um, discharging over the culvert. It appears that it is based on the mm -hmm. condition yeah. of it and where the road is that it's discharging over the culvert. And we don't, we don't want that. We want it to go to discharge prior to the head yeah. wall. Okay, any other questions from commissioners? Do we have, a, uh, again, on the uh, Zoom, I don't know if there are members of the public that might be uh, wanting to make a comment because um, I can't see everybody, but uh, we'll ask for that first before asking to close the hearing. If not, uh, Sarah, any comments before we close the hearing? I don't think so. I mean, my, my only question was, perhaps whether some of that the milling could be reduced in any way. And I, I know it's typically put in to reduce the maintenance and mowing necessary around the guardrail posts when some of this is a sensitive area. Uh, the answer to that is yes, we, we could. It's obviously they have to, yeah, it just makes uh, maintenance a little bit of a nightmare where they have to go out with weed whackers. Um, but if it's something that's in riverfront where you really you want it to be grass instead of millings. Um, we could do that. Or indigenous plantings, uh, not necessarily grass, to, but something, some kind of ground cover that has a root system that would help with uh, retention of, uh, of the, the soil in that area. Well, parts okay. of the, the side slope there might, you might need, you're going to do grass, um, you're going to need uh, some kind of Maybe a woven fabric uh, that you put down after you feed down to hold that slope. That one consideration from my perspective as someone who does infrastructure work on the side of the road sometimes is anything that keeps folks off of the road and off of the side of the road to reduce maintenance is often a good thing. So just keep that in mind, I suppose. Say more about the implications of that, Jason. See, if, if there are folks from the city that have to go out and maintain vegetation under the guardrail on the side of the road, you know, that, there's a safety concern there with traffic. So if, for example, millings reduce that, I, you know, in some ways, that's a good thing. Good point. Thank you. I think there's also a concern um, about the structural integrity of the edge of the pavement. Whereas if there's a, Chris might be able to talk to, about this more, <clears throat> but if there's stone or some harder surface along the edge of the pavement, it actually maintains the edge of the pavement better than grass or vegetation. Would. Anything that would um, have root systems that would infiltrate and press against um, right. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Right. <clears throat> All right. A motion to close the hearing. So moved. And a second. Second. All uh, in favor. Kevin. Yes. Mason. Yes. Jason. Yes. And Randy. Yes. And so, um, what do you think? I, my sense is that it seems both necessary and carefully designed. Um, 
and um, not a lot that we would want to add uh, in addition to standard conditions, erosion control, all of that sort of normal stuff. But I don't know if anybody else has additional thoughts among the commissioners. No, I, I agree. I mean, you know, there, there will be a slight incremental improvement just from the standpoint of, of improving drainage, not having it run over the uh, outlet. And then also, um, and I'm, I'm supportive of the, of the millings. I think that you know, stabilizing the side of the road, um, both from a maintenance and safety standpoint, but also from a runoff and erosion standpoint, would be good. If you have a couple of cars that sort of cut close or something like that and soften things up, um, it, it'd be nice to have something there to, to keep it stable. Good. I agree with Randy completely. Thank you. Okay. Good. Someone want to make a motion? Uh, let's see what the phrasing is. Um, well, we don't have a, a staff recommendation for a motion on here. So it'd be a motion to um, uh, grant this uh, permit for headwall replacement and um, um, uh, guardrail replacement. Uh, yeah, I, did, I didn't have anything in particular. Okay. I understand guardrail replacement is in seven areas. Right. Not, as not as, just, as yeah. referred to in, in the uh, uh, um, application. Someone, uh, is that a motion? Absolutely. Moved. And a second? Second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor. Sarah? Kevin? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jason? Yes. Randy? Yes. Very unanimous. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, now we're at uh, notice of intent for greenhouse building, parking, bike path, and stormwater management and related site improvements um, at the uh, 60 Damon Road um, parcel. And I don't know who he is here. It looks like Jeff Squire is here. Um, yes. To uh, present on behalf of the applicant. Yes. So yeah, thank you everyone. Um, Jeff Squire from the Berkshire Design Group here on behalf of uh, Delta Green Holdings or Green Delta Holdings, I'm sorry, who are looking to uh, redevelop the remaining um, land that's uh, at the old um, lane uh, asphalt plant off of uh, Damon Road. Um, and if I can share my screen, um, I'll do this quickly. So just real quickly, this is um, just a Google view of sort of the current situation. Um, this is the this is the site here. Um, it you know the, the original project had submitted a notice of intent. Um, I want to say back in 2013 now, uh, 2012, 2013 for redevelopment of this entire parcel. Um, just as a quick recap, you know, a bunch of land on the north side um, was was donated for conservation purposes. A portion of the project in the center and down to the river was redeveloped for uh, the community boathouse. And then there had been a plan to redevelop, you know, what is remaining um, in this area for a commercial business park. Um, and that um, I will show you real quick, um, just where, let's see, what have I got here? Um, so let's see, remember you see this plan here? Um, this, was, this was the original submission back in 2013. Um, and so this um, obviously included the entire parcel. Um, and real quickly, this, this was the, you know, the proposal that was permitted and approved at the time uh, for the boathouse. Um, there were three um, uh, uh, commercial buildings, um, outbuildings that were going to be sold as a separate project with um, adjacent parking areas and a central roadway and stormwater system and all of that. So what, what has happened since then is the boathouse obviously got developed. Um, the remaining land never was, was sold off and developed as originally proposed. Um, the order of conditions had since expired. And so thus we needed to file a new notice of intent for the project 
um, which now um, is, is what we're here tonight um, to, to present to you. And so this, this current project, um, again, picks up on um, sort of where, where things stand now. Uh, the boathouse in the center of the site was, was constructed as well as the parking lot and an apron uh, in front of it and the, and the boat ramp and access to the river. Everything within the bounds of what was remaining um, remained as is for, for a period of time. They've been using that for some of the construction staging area um, for the Damon Road and Route 91 work. Um, but that has now um, since been transferred to a new owner. Um, this is Delta Green Holdings for, for redevelopment. And so what they are proposing is a plan very similar to what was proposed previously. Um, which is, um, this was, um, again, just the, the original plan showing what, what was the boathouse, uh, commercial building here, commercial building here, and then another one here, parking lot and circulation. The current plan shows slightly smaller boathouse. This site has been built out, a small addition to an existing building in this location, but no real parking lot expansion. Um, and then two other buildings, um, which would primarily be greenhouses um, and some, you know, office and, and um, you know, storage space incorporated into them. But these parking lot areas have, have gotten much smaller. This one is really, um, it, you know, there is no parking area necessarily associated with this structure. Um, and so um, what we're looking to do is basically amend the previous permit, although recognizing that we can't, you know, we can't amend a permit that's been, um, that's expired. So um, that's, that's the purpose of this submission. Stormwater wise, um, just real quickly, that's really the only, the, there's, so there's resource area impacts, and then this, the stormwater piece. Um, and so I'll touch on the stormwater piece real quickly. This, this plan sort of highlights the original uh, stormwater plan. So again, the boathouse site that was originally proposed, there was a large rain garden that took a lot of the runoff from the boathouse and, and the, the apron along the riverside, a couple of catch basins to service this upper lot. Um, those were installed as part of this project. So this drainage line to a structure came down to a treatment uh, chamber, which also collected uh, this catch basin here this all discharges to a level lip spreader that was, was installed as part of this overall project. The, the lines that would service this parking lot in this building, as well as this infrastructure, and then a little bit further south, you know, again, similar, the, the level spreader and the, the stormwater drainage associated with the uh, parking lot previously in the buildings was never constructed. What we tried to do to simplify this application was, keep that system much as it was originally designed. So this is the current plan showing the basin that was constructed, these two lines and this infrastructure that goes to this spreader. We are picking up that same catch basin in the corner of this lot and the building drainage. Um, that all goes to that system that's installed. We are still keeping this infiltration trench and a building connection to this. This was designed to originally handle all of that stormwater, both building and parking lot wise in this location. Um, again, rather than trying to re -go, uh, reinvent the wheel again and go back and revisit all the calculations, we kept all of these stormwater structures and sizes and capacities the same as they were previously. Um, again, this building, um, again, picks up you know, the same, same infrastructure, goes to the same place. Um, Overall, impervious surface-wise, the red shows what was proposed previously and permitted. The blue highlights um, what is currently proposed. And overall, there's a net reduction in um, just about 27,000 square feet of impervious area that, that um, we're not proposing to construct anymore. So um, in terms of stormwater management um, and, and its ability to handle you know, this, this new project, um, you know, it's, it's really sort of an over-engineered system, um, but it was easier to, you know, uh, uh, just uh, modify that existing system than, than design a completely new stormwater system for this project, which is, you know, largely in the same location with the same, same infrastructure. Um, and then, um, I guess, real quickly before I leave that, 
we did get some comments from um, from Doug McDonald. Um, those included, um, you know, an understanding of um, you know the infiltration capacity of this of this system as it currently stands, and you know our comment to him, understanding he's on he was on vacation this week, but our, our comment back to him was that again we had designed. Um, the original stormwater system to accommodate the infiltration and to satisfy the infiltration requirements for, you know, the, the previous inf, uh, impervious area. Um, we left that system essentially exactly the same it is uh, as it is uh, or as it was with a reduction in 26, 27,000 square feet of impervious area. So we really have more um, infiltration capacity and, and ability on the site now than we did, you know, previously. So we don't feel that is, is really a, a major concern. The other question that, that Doug had pertained to um, ensuring that the areas where we are proposing to loam and seed, so a lot of that is, is in this area, also in this area, um, that was previously covered by, um, by gravel. And the concern being that, you know, while the loam and seed in, in concept is, is better for infiltration. The concern was that if we didn't do anything with the underlying soils that we wouldn't get that you know, infiltration um, capabilities. And our point was that all of these grades here are a fill situation. And so all of this material that exists now in that gravel area is gonna be disturbed. There's gonna be an additional layer um, you know, up to, you know, let's see here, um, 45. So 48 is existing there now. There's a 150 contour that comes through. So we've got at least two feet of you know, material and this of soil on this location, and it continues you know, down gradient. So our feeling was that there's going to be no issue with you know, infiltration capacity um, you know, with the soils and that the, the gravel that's there now really shouldn't pose an issue to, um, you know, to infiltration capacity in the future. Um, so that's, that was the stormwater comments. Um, and then lastly, with regards to some of the mitigation and resource area impacts, the majority of the impacts that happened with this project and that were permitted obviously were associated with the boat, um, with the boathouse and, and facilities originally. Um, you know, the boat ramp, the, the um, access way down, uh, riverfront area impacts, all of those were predominantly associated with the boathouse. What was left um, in this portion of the site was um, there were a couple of little mitigation areas um, that were highlighted and these were areas that were uh, formerly paved as part of the asphalt operations. Um, There's some gravel areas that um, you know, were being restored. And so these areas A, B and C were areas noted in the original notice of intent that were proposed to be you know, riverfront mitigation areas um, to satisfy the requirements of that uh, that permit. These areas, obviously, because of the, this work never happened, never occurred. So as part of this permit application, what we're proposing is to, you know, satisfy the mitigation requirements for, for these three areas. Everything else is outside of, you know, um, outside of the, uh, the resource area jurisdictional, um, you know, areas. And so satisfying, you know, fulfilling the requirements for this mitigation Theoretically, should should resolve you know any of the um, outstanding issues associated with the previous notice of intent. Um, I don't think I have anything else really to say at this point, other than just uh, yeah, happy to answer any other questions or, or comments that um, the commission might have. <clears throat> How close are you getting to the wetland areas? Um, so those, most of those, I think the closest we're getting is within 10 feet, you know, per the regulations. Um, it's not any closer than what was originally proposed. Is the historic uh, canal on the, uh, on the property? Yes. So that's on the right side of the property, sort of where my, my hand is, is running right now. That's, that's along this, this line. But we're okay. not doing any work over here other than some of those mitigation areas. I thought that there was a lock on the uh, northeast corner no. or northwest corner. Uh, there, there is, Nathan. It's on. There maybe remains. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's on the, uh, the city owned parcel. Okay. 
I was just wondering if there was going to be access maintained to get them yet. Which isn't really our concern, but it's not as part of the, the greenhouse project. Um, we're hoping to be able to do some of that down the road with the city property. So it seems like we ought to make sure that uh, the special conditions of the prior permit um, are incorporated into um, this work. Um, and I, as I recall, Sarah, we listed a couple of those. So snow storage, uh, um, future alterations for uh, mitigation in, in any kind of jurisdictional area are prohibited. Um, except for removal of species listed on the prohibited plant list. Uh, Vista pruning for safety, but all other coding, uh, all, all other cutting is prohibited. Uh, any other of the prior conditions that we ought to incorporate? Uh, those were the only ones that made sense for this portion of the project. The rest of them had been satisfied. Uh, a lot of them had to do it. Had to do where, the, where is the storage? Where is the snow storage going to be? I, I think there's plenty of room on site, you know, adjacent to the buildings, and there really isn't a whole lot. Um, let me go back to the plan. Um, so, I mean, there's there's a fair amount of area, you know, adjacent to the roadways. Um, you know, I imagine most of these sidewalks, um, you know, may not be plowed and maintained during the winter. Um, I don't entirely, I'm not entirely certain. Um, but there's certainly room on site. The buildings, you know, the, the buildings will just slough off and, um, you know, as greenhouse, um, as greenhouses won't, won't really amount to too much, I don't think. So what's the, the third building is, is like an office for the, uh, the greenhouses or? Correct. Yeah. But uh, Jeff, there wasn't a planting plan or any construction sequencing for the mitigation areas in the riverfront specifically. Could you just talk a little bit about the plan to restore those? Sure. So, um, yeah, and I'm trying to remember. Um, what these consisted of, so there, you know, we proposed to, to mitigate these in the same fashion that they were originally proposed, um, which was, you know, to remove, you know, the gravel and, and stock biomaterials. Um, there's six inches of um, uh, topsoil, and then there's a conservation mix that would be planted, um, you know, over those areas. Um, you know, in terms of sequencing, you know, in, in talking with the with the owner and applicant, I, the understanding is that you know they they would like to get this work done, um, you know, as part of the the initial part of the of the work, just because it's sort of um, outside of um, you know where they need to do a lot of the other work. So it would make sense to to get those areas mitigated and stabilized, and then you know there's no need to go back into those areas in the future. All of the other work is is internal to the site, so. Um, I know in discussions with them, the, the goal would be to get that done, you know, as early as possible, you know, and, and certainly by the spring of 22, um, but get all these mitigated, stabilized, restored, um, and then move on to, you know, the other portions of the construction. Does a conservation mix include uh, uh, native uh, shrubs or trees or things that will help develop an understory or is it there just... Yeah, there are. I was looking for the for the makeup of the mix, um, and I don't see it right here. But it does it does have a, a selection of um, of woody materials in there as well. It's it's a lot of herbaceous, but it is there are some woody species, dogwood, and some others. And once the conservation seed mix is put down, do you have a plan for maintenance of those areas? Just because you know you have the um, the borders of the. The mitigation there, but the rest of it is kind of just a, a nasty sea of invasive. Yeah, um, not specifically. Um, you know, we'd certainly be willing to entertain, you know, some, um, you know, annual mowing program or, or you know, invasive removal. I think, um, 
but obviously the goal would be to try to naturalize that and, and blend it into the, <laughs> the rest of the forest, but understanding that, yeah, what a, what a lot of what is there on the edge is, is a mess of stuff. Yeah, I think um, we'd probably want to include a, a three season um, requirement that uh, uh, inv of invasive removal and survival of the initial plantings um, sure. to make sure that they're actually um, dominating that those uh, mitigation areas and it's not reverting to um, invasives. Sure. So yeah, I think I think we can certainly entertain you know the the notion of a of, of a maintenance program. Any other questions from commissioners? I just, think, I just think we have to kind of wait to get A to hear from EPW on the uh, drainage plan and a written um, planting plan. We're just talking about it, but we don't have anything we need to refer to. Well, we could uh, require that as a, a condition staff approval of a, um, of a, a more detailed plan than just the general um, statement of uh, putting down conservation mix. Yeah, right. Yeah, I was look. I was looking for the specific plant makeup. In that in that mix and don't see it right here, but we can certainly provide that. And are there any trees proposed for that area, for larger shrubs? Um, I I mean I, yeah, I, generally the intent was to follow the original planting plan, which had a you know a line of of you know trees along the roadways, um, and there were you know there were a handful of shrub plantings in in these islands. Um, you know obviously it wasn't an elaborate landscape plan, but um, actually, I think I just, I just closed, I just closed it. Um, but in the mit mitigation areas, are there any, uh, substantial uh, vegetation, any trees or, or, I mean, yeah, you mentioned, uh, um, dogwood and other native, um, right. Woody yeah, there were, and... there were no other, you know, large tree species. I was really just following what was originally approved. But obviously, if you know, if the if the commission you know wants something a little bit more, we'd we'd be happy to entertain that. Some some kind of demarcation that uh, I assume they're going to be mowing the lawns around the buildings, um, and where you're only ten feet from the wetlands. I don't know what's there. I mean, um, should be something to tell a lawnmower guy, hey, don't go beyond this point. Start messing up the wetlands. It's, it's mostly forested wetlands out there anyway, but there are a few areas where the wetlands go beyond the edge of the trees. Yeah, and I mean, the only thing I will say, Mason, and I, I completely understand what you're saying. One of the things I will say is in a in a lot of these areas, in particular, there's there's a fairly steep, you know, drop off into the into where those wetlands are. Yep. Um, you know, it's it's certainly more pronounced in some places um, than others, but you know, in, in locations, you know, like around here, there's there's a three or four foot, you know, substantial drop down to where these wetlands are. So in terms of delineation, um, you know, I think I think those, especially where it's closest, are are pretty clear. Um, but there yeah. are others, you know, that that may not be. But I just yeah, right. wanted to point that, that out. That hasn't been constructed yet. Um, that no, this, this is an existing building, right? Yeah, right. and it hasn't been graded to that to those contours. At this point, right? No, but that, it, it exists there now. There is, I mean, we're we're blending in what's there, but there is, yeah. you know, there is a substantial grade drop there. But regardless, I I, I certainly um, hear your point. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's a uh, I. I I agree with Mason that it would be good to have some kind of uh, plan for an ongoing maintenance of the area. I mean, this this was a, a larger area that was just really trashed um, mm -hmm. in past decades, and it's, it became sort of a wasteland. And to the extent that 
Um, uh, yeah, now it's going to be much improved and there's some mitigation areas. Um, but you want to make sure that, uh, you know, a generation from now, um, some future owner isn't um, just feeling comfortable with, oh, well, you know, we can, this part's mode, we can, we can go another 50 feet that way and uh, without some kind of visual demarcation that says, no, you can't. Sure. Um, I don't. I, I don't think we probably need to require, um, uh, you know, big boulders or anything. But there ought to be some kind of uh, plan for how that limit is going to be maintained over time mm -hmm. when all the rest of us are long gone. Long gone. Yeah, well, I, I, I would. I know you said we didn't need boulders, but I will say that there is a healthy pile of boulders out on this site. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they can be used for that purpose. Um, Yeah. Anybody needs a boulder. Yeah, if you got the boulders right on site, you know. Yep. Put them to use. Um, okay, any other questions from commissioners? And I don't, don't know if there's any members of the public, but any questions from members of the public? Um, hello, can you hear me? This is uh, Mike Horahan of 127 Round Hill Road. Yes, hello. I just have a quick question about uh, maintaining, I guess we'll call it an easement to the public land. Um, I just was concerned uh, knowing that there was gonna be development in this area. Is there a plan even as that road is being paved out and the buildings are being built that uh, maintaining access to the boathouse and to the public lands is gonna be uh, still accessible during those times? Oh, during the construction? During and after and, and like uh, right now there is an open gate has that has right. been unused for many years uh, with a with a big no trespassing sign on it. Um, I wanted to ensure that the, the plan for this development of this area is, is to continue to allow the public to access the. Uh, the the gate will bit. remain open. <laughs> right, right. right. Yeah, yes. I don't. I just don't know if if the new owners intended to restrict access to the area during times no. of day, night, you know, etc. That was there. Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, I, I don't know all the, yeah, I don't know formal. Yeah. I, I don't know all the formal agreements, but I know that there is, there will be a formal, you know, agreement to, to, con, to ensure that there's continued public access along this roadway. Um, you know, it may be that they gate, you know, this parking lot to, to prevent the public from entering, you know, the, the parking lot specifically that are adjacent to the buildings, but in terms of, you know, access to the boathouse and, and the facilities along the river, that would certainly all be part of this agreement. Okay, excellent. There's also a trail system, I believe, that's going to be accessible, I believe. Right, yeah. Yeah, I had uh, regarded this as when the uh, boathouse and ramp were built, that this was uh, really uh, effectively a, a, a public area, uh, a public conservation or, or uh, green space. And um, I, it never occurred, it's a good question, uh, Mr. Huan, but that uh, it never occurred to me that the road might actually be private and controllable by um, the people who own buildings in that area. I, I figured that was a, a public access right of way. Sarah, do you know the answer to that? So the, lo uh, the location of the public access will have to be finalized. Um, but it, that was part of the agreement with the prior landowner that will carry on to any subsequent landowner. Okay, so that will be some that documented in some formal way uh, at some point. Okay. All uh, right. Je it, Jeff, could you just answer DEP's first question about um, the soils group and depth of seasonal high groundwater? Whether that was oh, confirmed previously, I think it was, but I couldn't remember. It it was, and I I meant to dig up the soil test pit information that we had from the original um, stormwater permit, but that was that was another reason to to keep these you know stormwater elements um, essentially the same as what was originally proposed because we did have adequate groundwater separation in these locations. We had you know test pits to confirm all of that, and I meant to dig that up before tonight's meeting and I, I just, yeah, it got away from me, but I can provide that information.
Any other comments or questions? If not, uh, is there a motion to close the hearing? I'll move the motion. I'll second. And a second. All right. Uh, motion made and seconded. All in favor? Kevin? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jason? Yes. And Randy? Yes. So, um, looks to me like uh, uh, permittable with uh, a few of the things that we've just discussed, uh, the inclusion of um, a few of the special conditions from the earlier order about um, uh, identifying uh, an appropriate snow storage location um, that's um, not in a jurisdictional area and is uh, credibly going to be, because I, I don't know if there's going to be salt used on this, but it should be uh, in a place where it may infiltrate into the ground, but it isn't going to sheet flow to the river or to the wetlands. Um, and then uh, um, the other uh, conditions were about prohibition for any um, work in jurisdictional area other than the uh, replication efforts and mitigation efforts um, and vista pruning being limited. Um, there was also uh, um, a uh, uh, requiring staff approval of a more detailed planting plan for the uh, um, uh, mitigation uh, areas. Um, Could you make that planting and maintenance plan? Yeah, yeah. That basically, a uh, an ongoing plan as well as the initial uh, planting plan. And was there anything else um, that we discussed in the last half hour or so? Yeah, mark, missing? marking the. Uh, oh yes, the marking the limits of of. Uh, uh, lawn and, and mowing and, and care um, and differentiating that so that after we're all gone, somebody else will still know where to stop. And I will leave, I'd let that be also a uh, staff approval that uh, you don't have to come back before us, just uh, included in a pre construction um, plan that Sarah can review and approve. Well, if they're going to do a planting plan, it could actually be on planning. Be part of that. I didn't hear all that. It could sense. be actually included with the planting plan. Sure. Uh -huh. Right. Good. So with all of those extra conditions attached, in addition to standard conditions, someone want to make a motion to grant the permit? Order of conditions? Sure, so moved. And a second? Second, second. All in favor? Kevin? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jason? Yes. And Randy? Yes. Very good. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it, everyone. Good enough. I appreciate care. Great. Um, last is just a continuance. Uh, notice of intent for construction of two single family homes in a shared driveway on Cardinal Way. And the applicant has requested a continuation until October 28th, uh, first up at that meeting, 5.30 at that meeting. So I want to make a motion to that effect. So move. And a second. Second. And any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Kevin? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jason? Yes. And Randy? Yes. Thank you. All right. Anything else we need to address at this meeting? How's that violation going? <laughs> uh, it, it, it's getting complicated. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, in, I think endangered species will probably be following up with the property owner about that. Uh, but I, I don't know what action they'll be taking. No one's heard from them in some time. So I'll the, um, re just refresh my memory. So did you actually levy a fine or was just the notification uh, of violation? Not, not yet. I'm working with the city solicitor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
the most appropriate way for me. All right, good. Jason, you were starting to say? I, I was just curious. I know those um, large um, concrete waste blocks went missing. I'm, I'm wondering if someone uh, with equipment pushed them into the river, down the bank. Uh, I, I think they disappeared. I don't think they were pushed into the river. Well, we'll see if the that, level that's the best ever goes down. If the, le yeah, right, if the level of the river ever goes down. Now, is endangered species going to require some kind of a restoration plan or something, too? Uh, so they concurred with the commission's enforcement order that required a restoration plan. Um, they didn't place any other specific requirements on it other than uh, their approval was necessary, which we included in our enforcement as well. Um, but a plan hasn't been provided, so we don't know what's going to be happening next with that. And the deadline for submitting it has passed already. Right. Anything else? Sarah sent me a, a magnificent picture of uh, Baxter State uh, Park where she was hiking these last few days. Just nice park. Spectacular vista. We, uh, we didn't do Katahdin, but we did a lot of other hiking and a lot of other peaks around that. It was amazing. I've never been there before. Highly recommend. Yeah. Right. And Randy, you were just up camping somewhere. No, in Maine? We, had, we actually called it off. Um, it was going to ah. rain for three days straight. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, did, I did end up going to Toronto to visit my folks, which was nice. Uh -huh. Now that you can get into the country. <laughs> oh, that's right. You can get into the country now. Yep. Uh -huh. All right. Well, I, I thought they, uh, they were closed till November. No, no, no. Any, any, well, any American that's vaccinated could get in starting August 9th, and anybody who's vaccinated can get in starting September 9th. Coming, communities can't come to the U.S. yet. Ah, that you must can be come back now. if you're, yeah, yeah, if you're American coming back, you can do that. <laughs> that was a worry for our show. We have a large contingency of Canadians that come down in buses to uh -huh. come to our show, and we actually have a couple of Canadian layouts here at our show and those guys, you know, gonna be a little worried too. But the show's, you know, once away. So yeah, you'll probably be okay. I mean, it's likely that, that everything will open up both ways by the end of November or end of October. Yeah, we're we're kind of towards the end of January. Oh, should be good. All right, Sarah, what do we have on uh, the agenda for next time? Uh, so I do not believe we will have any permits, um, but uh, we do have review of the updated management plan for Montview Conservation Area. Um, the conservation restriction in, included Conservation Commission review and approval of that every set number of years. I think it was two. Uh, it's actually a little bit beyond that, so I'll send materials about that. And also planning a public hearing to allow hunting at the Rocky Hill Greenway, which was something the commission had discussed yeah. uh, some Histori time ago. But we, we historically didn't. allowed there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, right. Okay. There would be a question of what kind of hunting. Um, uh, do we stick with just bow or is this a place where we take another step? So, okay, good. Or just dart hunting. <laughs> yeah. well, with blow darts like the yeah, there you yeah. go <laughs> and last things <laughs> all right won't we'll make noise won't we'll disturb the public all right well thank you everybody and uh we'll see, see you in a couple of weeks and what 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 date is that actually sir that uh that's the weeks, the october 14th 14th all right. Well, tell you what, on the 14th, I will be at this hour um, in the air flying back from Portland, Oregon. So um, hopefully we'll still have a, um, a, a quorum. And Mason, I'll have to ask you to, um, to uh, chair the meeting. Um, but we're going to, we haven't seen one of our kids in since pre COVID, and we're going out to, visit her and her family in Portland, so. Uh, that would be great. No problem, there's no hearings, that so should be fairly easy. Okay. <laughs> you never know, maybe the violators show up. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Shotguns and blow away the uh, TV. Uh,
Don't joke. This is kill a <laughs> Zoom meeting. <laughs> um, all right. Well, good to see everybody. Thank you very much. And um, I, I, I probably won't see you at the next meeting, but uh, we'll be in touch um, before the one after that. All right. Thanks very much. Nice to see everybody. Thanks, Take everybody. Care. Bye now. Bye. Bye.